for us humans, space is terrifying. It's an empty void that without protective suits, ships or stations would kill you in a matter of moments. Few shows do as well as The Expanse to capture just how perilous traversing space would be, especially with piracy and wars mixed in. During the last episode, the show takes a spacewalk to the extreme. So let's look at the science behind what would happen in an extreme spacewalk, where it's human versus space. We'll be covering spoilers from The Expanse, so if you haven't seen it already, I highly recommend you watch the show and come back here afterwards. From this point on, we will be in spoiler territory. Episode 7 of Season 5 ends with a truly amazing segment, where to escape Marco's ship, Naomi blasts herself out of an airlock without a suit to reach a ship they're just undocked with. Given the dangers of space, would this mean certain death for Naomi, or is it scientifically possible for her to actually survive? First of all, let's think about the reasons why space is dangerous. Well, there's lots of radiation for one, and you can get stuck drifting through space. But the biggest reason by far is the lack of an atmosphere, and of course, oxygen to breathe. And surprise, surprise, an atmosphere is pretty important for creatures like us that evolved on a planet with a lovely atmosphere. If you find yourself unprotected in the vacuum of space, what really would happen? One misconception is that in a vacuum, something dramatic happens, where the lack of an atmosphere will cause your head to explode. This misconception is fueled by movies like Total Recall and James Bond License to Kill, and despite what articles on Screen Rant suggest, this really isn't scientifically accurate. Our heads are mostly fine, it's the lungs that you should be worried about. In physics, we learn that differing pressures lead to forces. It's like the universe is trying to stay in balance, so the force aims to smooth everything out and make it the same pressure. The larger the pressure difference is, the greater the forces to try and balance out the pressure difference. So now imagine you're Naomi launching yourself into space. Should you hold your breath? or completely exhale. Let's take a moment to think about this. You might think that the best approach is to hold your breath, like when swimming. It certainly seems reasonable, you have more oxygen in your lungs, so you could stay conscious for longer. The thing is, swimming in water is exactly opposite to swimming in the vacuum of space from a pressure perspective. When swimming, your lungs have less pressure than the surrounding water. So the pressure force is trying to bring water into your lungs, but you can resist it, so there's not really a problem. In space, your lungs have much more pressure than the vacuum, so there's a strong force that will try and pull the air out of your lungs, and that we're not really designed to handle. To see how this would play out, let's use some balloons. In the first case, imagine we're holding our breath and we'll enter the vacuum of space. We'll represent this by tying up the end of the balloon. Okay, we have our lungs ready. Now let's apply a strong force to the balloon by squeezing it. Huh. Well, that doesn't seem too promising. By holding our breath in the vacuum of space, our balloon or lungs were subjected to forces higher than they could handle, so ruptured. That really doesn't sound too pleasant, so let's see what happens if we just go with the flow and exhale. We'll represent this by blowing up a balloon and not tying it off. Alright, let's see how exhaling handles the vacuum. Well, unsurprisingly, it deflated. But the key point here is that the balloon or lungs aren't damaged. We can inflate them with no issue once we find an atmosphere again. The other set of lungs, not so much. So if you're Naomi launching into space, you need to exhale. You can't rely on your lungs to hold extra oxygen for you. This brings us to the next problem. All of the oxygen you have is in your bloodstream. 
And in fact, your lungs will actively start stealing that oxygen from your blood and throwing it into space. In total, you only have about 15 seconds worth of oxygen floating around in your blood for your brain to use. Once that's gone, you'll fall unconscious, and after a few minutes, brain death will set in from oxygen deprivation, and that's the end. 15 seconds, that's all the time you would have. Unless, of course, you plan ahead and take a syringe of hyper-oxygenated blood with you. In that case, you could remain conscious for as long as the writers need. So it pays to think ahead like Naomi did. A similar scene plays out in the incredible movie 2001 Space Odyssey, as Dave boards the ship through an emergency airlock. After getting thrown around the place, Dave closes the airlock, and he's back in an atmosphere, so it's survivable. Naomi has a much bigger spacewalk, actually through space, so it's a bit more dangerous. As far as surviving in space goes, oxygen is the main problem, but the lack of an atmospheric pressure does create other problems. In general, the lower the pressure is, the easier it is for a liquid to boil. In the case where there is no pressure, it becomes extremely easy to boil liquids. You would first notice this as your own saliva begins to boil in your mouth, and this isn't just speculation. While testing spacesuits in 1966, Jim LeBlanc, a NASA aerospace engineer, had an accident where he was exposed to a vacuum. He remained conscious for about 14 seconds, and after pressure was restored and he woke up, he said that the last thing he remembered was feeling his own saliva bubbling on his tongue as it began to boil. This would certainly feel strange, but it isn't fatal. The real danger of boiling liquids is in your bloodstream. Jumping into a vacuum will literally make your blood boil. This is known as ebulism, and after 30 seconds, so many gas bubbles form in your veins that your heart just can't pump blood anymore. Changing liquid to gas also really messes with your body, inflating it much like our balloons from before. From embolism, it seems that you could only be in a vacuum for around 90 seconds before you can't be revived. So even with hyper-oxygenated blood, Naomi only really has one and a half minutes to jump between ships. Which is, of course, plenty enough time for this activity. Another thing that might be surprising is that although we say space is freezing with a temperature of minus 270 degrees Celsius, you don't actually need to worry about freezing to death. In an atmosphere, we lose heat by radiating it away slowly in infrared light, but most of it is lost through contact with the air itself. In space, you would only radiate heat away, so really it would take longer for you to freeze in space than in Antarctica. Also, in direct sunlight, more energy gets thrown at you from the sun than you can radiate away at any given moment. So the side of you that's facing the sun would actually heat up pretty quickly. The final danger we'll talk about here is solar radiation. Without the ozone layer, the sun is a deadly laser. Extreme UV radiation coming from the sun will cause a lot of tissue damage. So much like in New Zealand's summer, you don't want to be in the sun for too long without protection. Even though this scene is a bit unpleasant, it shows amazing attention to detail that Naomi's face is getting burnt on the side that's actually facing the sun. Although it may seem unlikely that Naomi could be so accurate in her jump between ships, this scene is remarkable because it's believable. Even though we need an atmosphere to survive, it's certainly possible for someone to jump between ships in the vacuum of space without a spacesuit and live. Once again, the writers have done a fantastic job making a show that a nitpicking and biased astrophysicist like myself loves. So always remember, if you're ever headed out into space without a suit, take one deep breath, exhale, then hope you find an atmosphere very soon. Until next time, thanks for watching. Where are my balloons?
Okay, so we have our lungs ready. Now let's apply a strong force to the balloon by squeezing it like space would do to our lungs. Oh no! 